today we do more wiring so back out in the shop again today gonna keep wiring on this thing gonna try to get it fired up hopefully uh, i'm not gonna rush it though if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out but that is kind of my goal to get everything ran and possibly fired maybe not have everything working and functional but everything pretty much enough to at least start the thing uh, I also got to find a plug for the rear end to be able to do that and I don't have one so got to try to find one of those uh, for like a yoke to set in the rear end because I don't have a drive shaft yet. But I started out this morning with running a couple extra cables through this harness, the Holly harness that powers it that we looked at last time. Uh, so I got wires to come up and then those will split out and come over here to the fans. There was some extra room in this loom so I might as well use it to go ahead and get those wires out there and help kind of keep everything clean. There's already going to be a quite a few looms running along the frame rail right there. So I'm going to go ahead and get that. Then mostly everything will be finished up up here as far as like getting wires in position. So then I can run some wires to the back of the truck for the trans cooler and everything. We've got a whole mess of wires in here and then need to get these wires here uh one goes to ground one goes to power same with over there i need to run a ground and a power out i think i'm gonna run them over in some loom and bring them down here along the frame rail and up into the cab uh if there's enough room i'd like to actually bring them almost all the way up and run them in through this same uh grommet here but i don't know if there's going to be enough room in that grommet with both those in that grommet but yeah that is what we got going on so i'm gonna just keep working away and i will update you guys as i make progress and building the ground cable over to the frame rail cleaned it up a little bit and now i needed a little ground strap from the engine over to the battery or to the frame rail people take them both places i guess but this one's close enough that i could probably take the battery um so i just went ahead and built my own little ground out of two 14 gauge since i don't have any more heavier gauge i thought i'd try this see how well it would work I assume it's going to be fine, no different than them, like little ground straps that people take to kind of expand and contract off the engine. Uh, so I might end up going with one of those if I need to, but I think this will be fine here. And if not, I can always get something a little bit heavier duty as well. So I think officially everything is pretty much wired in the engine bay. Still got to clean up some wires, tuck them up and everything, hook up the battery terminals. Need to feed that last wire through, hook it to that block. Uh, I even got like the vacuum hose put on the back of the intake battery is charging just in case I happen to get to where I can start it today and otherwise everything else is looking pretty good so now I'm going to go ahead and move on into I'm going to feed that long wire that was off the one relay out of that grommet there and see if I can make it to the back to tie into the other wire if not I might carry it through the truck a little bit uh, it's probably best to keep that wire as short as possible but unfortunately it's going to be a long wire to come off the tank along down along the frame up into the relay board but Keeps everything clean that way, so we're gonna go ahead and work on getting some wires fed through, getting more and more wires up in this area. So eventually we will end up terminating everything and then it will be wired. So a lot of the connections I've been doing on this truck have been mechanical connections. I haven't been soldering much other than the main power cables. Um, on some cars, people, it seems like they solder everything and then some people only swear by mechanical. So uh, by mechanical, I'll show you guys. Let's see if I can get this in the frame for you. I got the wire. I wanna, so I got the wire. I went ahead and stripped it. I'm gonna go ahead and take and put my little end on here. I will crimp this and then just slide a piece of heat shrink over. This is the connection for the fuel pump in the back. The crimps usually have a little slice in them. And then when you look at your crimping tools, you have a little uh, saddle, if you will, and then a point. So the point will actually squeeze down on that little piece right there where you see the split and help force it onto the wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and crimp that right there. Put a lot of force on it. And then you guys can see, it goes ahead and crimps right there. So solid connection. I'll go ahead and heat shrink this over it and then go ahead and mount that to the fuel cell. All right, I'm in the truck trying to find a good little spot to mount this little key switch that I bought. And I was thinking maybe up here in the dash, but I think I'm gonna be able to get by with not having a bunch of toggle switches and everything. So with this, I'll be able to mount it kind of wherever. I was thinking like right here would have been cool, uh, but it's not gonna fit right there. So this little piece right here, I think it can mount right there. Have the key just sitting right here. So I went ahead and loosened this up. As long as there's nothing back behind it, looks like I still might have something hooked. Um, as long as there's nothing back behind it. Oh, I forgot, this is all part of it. And also you can see it is clear room to run wires back along here. And then over to everything else, that's actually where all the other wires ran 
for the stock column. So that'll be perfect. Just go ahead and set the key here instead of it being like up here where it used to be on the column. Uh, so go ahead and knock that little hole in it, mount that up. Should be, should be good to go. I'll probably just go ahead and hook all my leads onto the ignition switch, install it, and then run it over there, and then I'll terminate everything over there. So go ahead and build it all, and then put it into place. So I'm gonna show you guys one of the real important things here on a Holly. One of them is that the ignition needs to be hot when on and starting. So I bought this little switch from AutoZone, and it actually is gonna work out really good. I'm gonna show you how I checked it and what to look for when you're doing the same thing. So I got a voltmeter sitting right here, put on 12 volts, and then I have the key sitting here in the off position where the key can pull out. So you can check it, you got 12 volts right there. When the key is just sitting there, you have 12 volts coming in from the battery, of course, because it's connected. So then you check everything else. And you don't have 12 volts anywhere else. So on this switch, this right here is accessory. So if you turn it backwards, you could have power so you could power whatever you want. And then this right here is ignition. So this is the kind of important part on a Holly, is that if you're touching this and you go to on, the on position of the key, you now have 12 volts. And then when you go to crank it, you still have 12 volts. Because the Holly needs to see 12 volts on and cranking to make sure the ECU can stay alive during that time. If it falls off, a lot of old cars, when you go to the crank, it'll lose on the ignition and then it will die. Also, and then you can look at the start, nothing there. And then when you go to start, 12 volts on the start. And then accessory, you could always do that, set that up and roll it back to accessory, check accessory and have 12 volt there. So if you wanna hook anything up off that, you can. But this is really important that start, the 12 volt in the start and run position, the run and crank position is super important for the Holly. So one of the five wires will come and hook up to this plug right here. And then this wire will go to the neutral safety switch on the shifter and then out to the starter. So this right here cleans everything up, makes it super easy to hook up. And I don't have to have like a toggle switch for the ignition. So I'm pretty, pretty happy I actually went with this little setup because that makes wiring it really easy. Over to the alternator real quick to get this wired up. I wasn't going to, but I might as well get it done. I actually had this on an old harness head laying around or you can go to AutoZone and buy this thing for like 40 bucks. I think you can find them on the internet for like 25, but I have those things sitting there doing nothing, so might as well use it. So this is the plug, it plugs in right here. And this is the exact same alternator I've used on the Mazda. This wire here will go to direct 12 volt. Uh, it just ignites it or whatever. And then this one needs to go into an ignition switched, but it also needs to have a light bulb in line with it. So this is a little light bulb that I picked up the other day at the store. You wire these in, I have one in both cars to activate it. It acts as a resistor, throwing these little bulbs in line. It's worked great. Uh, it gives you a little light into the dash when things aren't on or whatever. So when the car's running, I think it turns the light off. It works out pretty well. And then this will go underneath, so it'll go from ignition switch over. Uh, I'll need to put this in line and then come out of this and then it will tie into this wire here. So I'll have another wire coming out, tie into this, which will activate the alternator. It's kind of weird. So this one again goes to 12 volt, which goes right over the battery. So always hot 12 volt. And then an ignition switch 12 volt with a resistor and line. I use this little light bulb as a resistor and works awesome. So that's where I got a splice wire. So I am gonna go ahead and add just a little drop of solder on each end. And then I'll go ahead and wrap it up with some uh, heat shrink. So now I went ahead and ran the power wire over. There's the ground for the fuel pump, the ground for the trans cooler, and then the power goes into here. So the two powers for both the fan and the fuel pump run up along the frame rail and come inside of the truck right here. So I went ahead and dropped the fuse panel again. So, so here is the power wire for the transmission cooler. And then the fuel pump is already hooked up. I just need to put the relay in it. Now I have this wire here is for that. So I need to go ahead and connect these two wires there. Go ahead and strip that, connect it, heat shrink it. And then I have the two fans from up front that I need to go ahead and hook up to the two signal wires off of uh, the other relays here for the fans. And then we're gonna be good. So then everything's terminated there. I'm going to need to bring an ignition wire off of the key that I have here and run it along the back and come into here 
and then off of this ignition wire I'm going to put the little light bulb and then I can feed the alternator out there as well as anything else that might need an ignition signal and then the last wire I'll need to run is the starter wire off of here out through the front and to the starter so everything's coming along just got to finish uh, terminating a few wires in here uh, this wire here goes to ground so I need to off this relay here to trigger that it needs to go to ground so I'll go ahead and get that hooked up and then there's a few more wires that will end up having to run like the two-step button and all that stuff which I will do later I just want to get everything running and make sure everything's good uh, I do have the ECU sitting right here and then I will bring the main power harness for the ECU up through there and plug it in as well as the uh, O2 I have it ran in here so here's the vacuum line off of the intake is now inside so I just need to terminate everything inside here and then slide it back up underneath the dash and then try to hopefully fire this thing hopefully it'll hopefully it'll come together and it always gets nervous when you've run this many wires and done all this stuff this is a factory wire here um, if there's going to be an issue or hopefully no sparks or anything everything's fused so it should be should be safe on that side at least so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to keep plugging away on this wiring well got the ignition switch installed too bad I cut the hole with it rotated thinking I was the other way but I must have thought it was upside down I don't know I should have marked it and put the hole over here for this key does thing you know normal normal vehicle you start with your right hand um, but this would still work I don't know if I like it or not I guess I could move it over and just cut a hole over there and I'll have a dummy hole over here um, for something but Yep, that's uh, it's part of not paying attention, I guess, when you go to drill a hole. Alrighty, now that I have all my wires pretty much terminated over there, I have my ignition switch installed in the right position, now I can go ahead and look at the loose wires and figure out where I'm heading with them. So, I've already read this once. Here's what it says to do. The red-white wire, which is right here, it comes out of the harness over here, is the switched one so that's the one that will tie to the ignition switch and be on while on and cranking it will also tie the alternator wire so i'll run them over and i'll use up that open spot right there on the uh, little distribution block for the switched ignition source the next one is required 12 volt that powers the fuel pump and fuel injectors which this will just be powering the um this will just be sending signal to the fuel pump since we are running a separate relay. So this one just gets 12 volt straight. So then I'll probably go ahead and use one of the lugs over there that are open on the power distribution block. Next will be the green wire that is right here. Comes in on the main harness. I'm gonna go ahead and hook this one to the signal on the fuel pump which is on my little distribution block, the little yellow wire will signal the relay to switch to send power to the fuel pump. And the next one is black, so connect to chassis ground. It just needs a good solid uh, chassis ground. And I also have that gray wire over there that needs to go to chassis, so I'll find something up in there, make a little chassis ground, and go ahead and mount it to the chassis somewhere over there. And then the final one is blue with white stripe, that is uh, 12 volt square wave output to trigger conventional tack. So if you wanted to set like a real tack up in the vehicle, you could go ahead and use the blue white. In the Camaro, I use it for, uh, I have an adjustable tack shift light. So it has a tack input, I take that wire, go straight to the uh, shift light, and that's what I use it for there. And then, because you'll end up having RPM reading and everything on the dash. So I'm gonna go ahead and run these last few wires here get it all hooked up and then the wiring should be almost complete the only other things that i really got to run in here are going to be the ones off the key which one will go over there one will come over here to the neutral safety switch on the shifter and then out to the starter and then the last one needs to go over and go to 12 volt to send the key 12 volt so once you crank it can send signal out I will probably be putting a fuse on the 12 volt from the distribution to the key uh, just in case something goes wrong or whatever it has a um, fused link there. So I ended up getting the fuel pump wire uh, set, the ignition wire to the holly, that light bulb wired in that will feed the alternator 
So all I really need to do to finish up is fan one and two that will come off of the IO harness that is sitting over there on the heater. Um, so I'll get that plugged into one of these plugs here, this one right here. And uh, so plug that in, run those wires over to there, and then we're going to be pretty good. I just need a few more wires ran, tuck everything back up. I could even leave it down just like this to fire it, make sure when I first initially fire everything up, uh, nothing catches fire, nothing starts getting hot, smoking, any of that stuff. And then once it's good, set it into place. Um, one or the other, I'll figure something out, but trying to get it somewhat cleaned up. Got the ECU sitting in here with the wires plugged into it. I can, I can come back here later and mount the ECU, uh, all that. But so it's really close. All right, everyone, I'm gonna call it a night here. I have work to do there in the morning, and then after work, I will be back out here trying to finish up the wiring, throw some fluids in it, and maybe even fire this thing, hopefully tomorrow night. But it's coming soon. I just didn't want to rush it. I could have started running wires and firing it, but uh, pretty much when it's done, it's gonna be ready for a drive shaft and a drive. So everything, I'm fully finishing pretty much everything other than maybe tidying up a few little wires here and there, but uh, it's gonna be extremely close to being able to do a burnout. Alrighty, so I'm back on the shop. I'm gonna finish up a few wires like the starter wire and some of the inputs and outputs on the main harness down there. And then hopefully go ahead and put some fluids in it, maybe give it uh, some power so I can check for leaks and all of that. And then there will be one step closer to starting it. One of the things that I need to get installed in the truck is this in-out harness. It plugs right on to the Holly harness and then it gives you four wires. I believe the grays are outputs, the whites are inputs. So if you're gonna input like the two-step on the truck whenever I go to wire that in, which I actually need to get wired in, but I'll go ahead and terminate that later, is one of these will go to ground, the other side will go to an input. And then in the Holly, you'll configure it for two-step, uh, rev limit, and all of that. On the gray, like the gray yellow, is a fan, and then one of the other ones is a fan, and then you have like AC and IAC kick down, but you can configure them differently. But you have to have, but on that you have to have the USB cable to control the Holly. So I have one of those coming, that's another $50 that you don't expect when buying a Terminator. But it's really useful, you need it whenever you're messing with the Terminator and stuff, if you're gonna, uh, if you're gonna customize your inputs and outputs and all that. If all you're gonna do is what's capable on the screen, then you're okay with that, but you can also convert it, do more tuning with it and everything else when you have that cable to completely get into the software instead of just what's on the little touchpad. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this IO harness installed in the truck, run the starter wire, and then go from there. IO plug that comes off the main harness, I went ahead and popped out this little dummy seal plug that they have on it. I will go ahead and install this on here, and then that gives you all of your inputs and outputs. All of the other ones, I'll just leave like this up underneath the dash, so then anytime you wanna add something, or like running the two-step wire to it, just go under there, pull that wire out, connect to it, tie it back up, and then you can add and take from this as needed. Um, like just like if this thing ever had turbos, this is where you'd hook up the boost controller. Uh, nitrous, this is where you do some of that stuff with the solenoids or like this two step button or a trans brake coming off the trans brake going to a little protector module and then sending the ECU 12 volts for trans brake and then the trans brake gets power there. This truck does have a trans brake but I'm not gonna use it right now. Uh, I don't see the need in it right now but definitely we might play with it here later. Man, that kind of looks like a mess, but it'll all clean up pretty decent once I took everything up. But everything is finally hooked up. Fuel pump, fans, ignition. I need to put my little light bulb in here for the alternator, so that'll work. But otherwise, everything in here is pretty much done for now, other than, like I said, hooking up some of the accessory stuff later on, which we'll go over when that time comes. The only other thing I need right here is this can. This is where the little three and a half inch dash will plug in. So I'll go ahead and grab that, plug that into here. If I can get it to clip in there real quick. Might be doing it upside down. Oh, I think I had it right. So to help if I could see it. There's more light over here. All right, so we get the little can, this little die. These are stiff too. They're kind of a pain to get out once you need to unclip them. But it looks like 
Looks like the plugs are at the top. They're just like this. So actually where the little push you the little clip you push on, go ahead. So it looks like you go to the top, the little clip you push on goes right here to the top of it. And now the dash is plugged in. So everything inside the truck, I believe, fingers crossed, is done and correct. It's quite a mess. I'm going to leave it down so then when I key on, I can just watch everything, make sure nothing looks real like it's getting hot or starting to smoke or anything crazy like that. It's always nervous. Uh, you get one wrong wire to the wrong pole or terminal or whatever, it could be a mess. Um, so one of the last things that I also did was hook up the starter wire. Came right down here, went to the starter lug on the starter. But other than that, it is just hooking up the battery and giving it main power. Uh, what's kind of nice... So it's nice on cars like the Mazda and the Camaro with having a power on off switch in the back is you can have somebody stand there, key on if anything's real weird, they can hit it and kill the battery completely. Uh, this won't have that, so we'll either have to disconnect it off the battery real quick, so maybe just have somebody touch the ground, make sure everything looks good, key on key, everything looks great, perfect, and then go from there, uh, just in case you gotta pull the ground off real quick in case there's something wrong. Uh, you're not just locked into it, just sitting there heating up until you can get the battery undone. The last few things that I need to do before starting it is put some fuel in it, because I think whenever you key on, the Holly is going to go ahead and run the fuel pump, and we don't want to run the fuel pump dry. So go ahead and add some fuel in there. Also, after the, for the first time, I'll probably go ahead and disconnect the return and put it into a bucket so it just filters out any debris that's still in the lines it'll filter it back and into the bucket throw that away and then start with some more fresh fuel in it but otherwise otherwise everyone i think we are this close to getting it started so i'm going to go ahead and end this video off here make sure you hit that subscribe button for the next video i'm going to do all my pre-check prime the engine and get ready to start this thing give it power and hope for the best this is james and we'll see you next time